Good morning and welcome to Historic Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. Originally established as Fort Whipple in 1863 and changed to Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall in 2009. Its main purpose was fortification in the defense of Washington. Since its inception, Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall has been the home of horse cavalry, artillery, and infantry. Today, it is home to the Old Guard, the United States Army Band, and the United States Army Garrison. Before today's review begins, the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own, presents a pre-ceremonial concert featuring the following musical selections. This is my country and man of the hour. Once again, good morning and welcome. Today, the United States Army Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own, pay a special tribute to Lieutenant General Bruce T. Crawford, Chief Information Officer, United States Army, who is retiring after 34 years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's ceremony, from left to right, is the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff, General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing's Own provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Colonel Andrew Esch, and led by drum major Matthew Carmichael. Elements of the Old Guard include Delta Company, commanded by Captain Shea Haber, and led by First Sergeant David Stephen. Next on line is Hotel Company, commanded by Captain Jonathan Beto, and led by Sergeant First Class David Santana. Since the days of the American Revolution, 
The colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, in the center of our formation and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Sergeant Nathan Silfies. Next on line is Honor Guard Company, commanded by First Lieutenant Jake Kaplan and led by Sergeant First Class Justin Verbarnsey. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by Captain Ian Quinn and led by Sergeant First Class Stephen Wood. Next on line is Regimental Support Company, commanded by Captain Michelle Sue, and led by First Sergeant Antonio Crawley. The last element to your left, dressed in the Continental Musician's Uniform, is the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The Corps is led today by Drum Major Ryan Mullins. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the Commander of Troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel David Lamborn, Commander, 4th Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 52 well-earned campaign streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 5 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Bruce T. Crawford, accompanied by the host, General James C. McConville, 40th Chief of Staff of the United States Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as honors are rendered and remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Green, Deputy Chief of Chaplains.
Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Green. Good morning. Please bow with me. Almighty God, thank you for the seasons of life, for the joy of youthful dreams, the excitement and the stability of maturity. Thank you for the blessings that come with age, for the happy memories to enjoy, for the wisdom that comes through experience, oftentimes born in the crucibles of challenge and determination, and for the freedom and the awesome sense of accomplishment that is given with retirement after 34 years of faithful and dedicated service in the Army and to the United States of America. Lord, I humbly ask that you continue to bless Lieutenant General Crawford, his wife Diane, his sons Corey and Bruce Jr., his daughter-in-law Sonia, his granddaughter Bren, and his mother Miss Sarah Crawford, and other family members, colleagues, and friends gathered with him to celebrate this special season of life. We are especially thankful for their years of commitment, sacrifice, and dedication to this great soldier and our country. Lord, our nation owes a debt of gratitude to Lieutenant General Crawford and for his service offered on behalf of her people to protect and preserve the freedoms we cherish and enjoy as Americans. As you have guided and abided with him and his family throughout their years of service to the nation, we ask that you continue to lead and guide them in the next phase of their journey as they pursue new beginnings, explore new things, and pursue other interests. We commit them to your loving and faithful and protective care in the name of our Lord, we pray. People first, winning matters. Amen. Please be seated. Troops in review.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the United States National Anthem. Please be seated. The Distinguished Service Medal is being presented to Lieutenant General Bruce T. Crawford, United States Army, for exceptionally meritorious service to the government in duties of great responsibility over a 34-year career, culminating as the Army Chief Information Officer G-6, Office of the Secretary of the Army. During his tenure as the Chief Information Officer G-6, Lieutenant General Crawford had an extraordinarily positive and global impact on the Signal Regiment, our Army, and the entire Department of Defense. Recognized for his remarkable contributions in the field of communications and cyber, he is also a strategic thinker and visionary whose understanding of budget cycles, operations, technology, and warfighting requirements made a lasting contribution to the success of our entire force. Serving in both war and in peace, his leadership in the fields of information technology investments, workforce modernization, and data and cloud computing will shape our force for decades. Lieutenant General Crawford's exceptional service, coupled with a tireless devotion to duty, a deeply rooted love for this country, our soldiers, and their families, reflects great credit upon him, the Chief Information Officer, G6, and the United States Army 
Signed, Mark T. Esper, Secretary of Defense. Department of the Army Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following General Officer is retired. Lieutenant General Bruce T. Crawford. Lieutenant General Crawford is being presented the United States flag in recognition of his time-honored service to the United States Army and the nation. The Distinguished Public Service Award is being presented to Mrs. Diane R. Crawford for extraordinary contributions in support of the soldiers and families of the United States Army. For more than 33 years, Diane Crawford dedicated her considerable talents and energy toward improving soldiers' quality of life and family readiness. She selflessly served in multiple volunteer positions on family readiness and support groups, most notably the Free State Challenge Academy, which offers at-risk adolescents an opportunity to improve their future by providing the skills, education, and self-discipline needed to become responsible, productive citizens. Her enthusiasm, energy, and infectious spirit of volunteerism made her an outstanding role model and inspired countless others to serve the military service. Diane Crawford's 33 years of selfless service are in keeping with the highest traditions of volunteerism and are a great credit to her, the Office of the Chief Information Officer, G6, and the United States Army. Signed, Ryan D. McCarthy, Secretary of the Army. On the occasion of the retirement of this distinguished soldier, we also recognize the outstanding dedicated service and support of his spouse, Mrs. Diane Crawford. Therefore, she is being presented the Department of the Army Certificate of Appreciation. And now, the Chief of Staff will now make a special presentation. At this time, Lieutenant General Crawford is presenting a bouquet of roses to Mrs. Crawford in recognition of her support and dedication. We are proud to recognize Lieutenant General and Mrs. Crawford's devotion to our country and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors. Now, right? Hey. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the 40th Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville. Well, well, good morning and, and, and thank you all for being here today. And thanks to those who are watching online. Uh, I'd like to recognize a few distinguished guests here today. Uh, the Honorable uh, Dana Deasy, sir, thank you for being here. Uh, General Ward's here. Many other distinguished uh, general officers, many friends. And, and thank you all for making this, this occasion very, very special as we recognize an incredible leader and soldier and I know it means a lot to Bruce and his family to have you all here. You know, as I often like to say, every day is a great day to be in the United States Army because we serve with the greatest soldiers. And those soldiers are standing behind me on the parade floor, I guess you would call it. So how about a hand for them? They just look great. And today is, 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 is a special day for the Army because we honor the service of a great soldier, a truly innovative leader, and quite frankly, just an incredible person, General Bruce Crawford. And Bruce has served the nation for over 34 years. And here with him today is his wonderful family and many of his lifelong friends. And I'd like to start by recognizing Bruce's incredible wife, Diane, who has been by his side longer than he's been in the Army. She's an she has an amazing heart and is a true leader in the community. She leads other teachers and specialists at the Echo Tank Academy, where they're dedicated to helping children with special needs. She is a mentor to military families and leads events to connect with spouses in Gold Star families. And on top of her teaching career and volunteering, she and Bruce raised two remarkable sons, Bruce Jr. and Corey, both with a talent like their father in technology and innovation. And I mentioned Diane as a leader because I'm pretty sure she has been the key leader on the Crawford team since the beginning. And that beginning began when they were in class together at South 
Carolina State University. And Bruce had to devise a way to get Diane to talk to him. So he asked her for help with his homework. And Diane, being the kind teacher at heart, decided to help him out, and the rest is history. Including the part when she organized their wedding while well, Bruce was at Ranger School. And this, you know, she set the date that uh, Bruce had to be a first time go, uh, or he wasn't gonna make the wedding. So it was either because of his incredible grit or his leadership talent or the fear of messing up his wedding plans that Bruce went through as a first time go, a uh, first time go. And Diane has been Bruce's fearless leader for going on 34 years. So thank you, Diane. How about a hand for Diane? And Bruce Jr. and his wife Sonia and their own six-month-old daughter Bryn is here. And BJ is a Singles Corps officer who just finished 24 months of command at Fort Stewart, Georgia. He superbly commanded the Single and Intelligence Company for the Division Headquarters and Headquarters Battalion, which is, we all know, a very challenging and critical command. And he did it so well. So thank you, BJ. And because of his potential, the Army has selected him to attend a graduate school through a very competitive process, and he's getting ready to attend the University of Maryland to earn his MBA while on active duty. So congratulations to you, BJ. How about a hand for BJ? And Corey, their youngest son, is also here. Again, incredibly smart and talented in information technology that runs in the family, and he just accepted a role as a business intelligence analyst while getting his degree in information systems management. So how about Corey also? And I know for, for Bruce and Diane what's very, very special uh, about the retirement coming together here is you'll have your family close by. And I know for, for BJ and Sarn, this is great because I know that daycare can be a challenge but you got a full-time childcare option, and his name is Grandpa. So how about that, huh? <laughs> Another very special person here today is Bruce's mother, Sarah. And I'd really like to thank you, Mom, for raising such an incredible son and giving him to the Army for so many years of distinguished service. You should be very, very proud because we are very, very proud. How about a hand for mom? And Bruce says his inspiration came from you, his grandparents, his, his parents for teaching him and his brothers and sisters the idea of service, to treat all people with dignity and respect, to always be humble, and to always care about others. Well, I can tell you that he's truly a man of those qualities, and I can attest that he treats everybody with dignity and respect because those who have served with him have flourished under his leadership. I'd also like to acknowledge Bruce's da dad, Daniel, who's not here today, but he's another important figure in Bruce's life. He's a veteran, not only the Army, but he also served in the Marine Corps and the Navy. And he was a great role model to Bruce and taught him a lot about the value of service and respect. But I'm glad he pointed Bruce towards the Army so we could have him. Bruce's sister, Wander, and his niece, Carmen, are here. His brother is here, Charles, with his wife, Tameka. So it's so great to have all of the family here today. And family is really important. I know you don't need to say that to this group, but in the military, when you have to move around a lot and you serve overseas, family means everything. For many of us, there are friends who are as close to us as family. And looking around, as I see so much of the family, I also see the friends who have been here for the Crawfords throughout Bruce's career. And there have been very few people that I have met that have so many friends like Bruce. Like the hometown friends, college friends, and friends who call on you to be their son's godfather. Bruce's friends from South Carolina have been a loyal and, and close group who still talk often. One of Bruce's closest friends is here, Tony Chandler. One of his best friends since second grade. They went to elementary, 
middle school, high school, college, and even the single officer corps together. How about that? How about a hand for Tony? And Tony and a circle of friends from South Carolina, they all st still stay in close touch and look to Bruce as uh, their leader. I'd also like to mention Doc Dr. Clarence Hill. I'm, I don't think he's here today, and he may be watching, but I know Dr. Hill played an important role in Bruce's life early on as a mentor and guide. He saw the talent that has gotten Bruce to where he is today, the talent to inspire, the talent to lead, innovate, and transform. And if it weren't for people like Dr. Hill, we would have lost out on an incredible officer who's had incredible impact on the Army. Many more mentors have been important throughout Bruce's career. People that he served with, like General Vi, General Farrell, Brigadier General Clara Adams Ender, and all those who inspired Bruce to continue serving and guiding him as a leader. So I'd like to say to the family, the friends, and the mentors that are here or watching, thank you for your commitment, thank you for your support, and thank you for your inspiration you've given to Bruce and his family throughout their Army journey. I know it means a lot to them. Bruce's journey includes deployments to Operation Je Desert Shield and Desert Storm in Saudi Arabia, and commanding the great 82nd Single Battalion supporting Operation Iraqi Freedom. I've had the honor of serving with Bruce over the last few years, first when he was director of the Chief's Coordination Group for General Casey, and I was figuring out how to be the Chief of Legislation Liaison. Still haven't figured that out. But when Bruce was the G6 and I was the Vice, we worked closely on modernizing the Army's network, which pretty much meant Bruce setting the conditions and designing what the Army would look like in the information age, and the rest of us getting out of his way and giving him the resources he needed to get it done. Bruce has been one of the most pivotal leaders of our time, leading the Army through our transformation from the industrial age to the information age. He's helped us not only transform our technology, but he's critical in transforming our industry in small business relationships, our organizations, our policies, and our strategies to take the Army's information technology and cybersecurity enterprise to where it needs to be to dominate in our current and future global environments. He has fundamentally changed the Army's strategy for enterprise IT modernization and leading the first ever Army data strategy in creating the Army's first enterprise cloud environment. He is also passionate about preparing our youth for the future, especially when it comes to emphasizing this, the importance of education in STEM. He volunteers with Bayer's Stars and Stripes Mentorship Program. He's intimately involved with Rocks Incorporated and the Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Just earlier this year, Bruce was named the 34th Black Engineer of the Year, and that is a really big deal for him and for our honor. <laughs> Just to put that in perspective, he is the fourth active duty officer to be recognized for this award, and the first on active duty in the past 22 years. What an accomplishment. Bruce and Diane, we are grateful for your distinguished service and commitment to the Army. You are leaving an incredible legacy to us, both in the advancements you're led and most of all with the people that you have inspired. We wish you and Diane all the best of luck and Godspeed in a well-deserved retirement. God bless you and your wonderful family. People first, winning matters. We remain Army strong.
Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Crawford. All right, good morning to everyone. For General Ms. McConville, distinguished guests, family and friends who have and continue uh, to be a part of the journey of Team Crawford. The first thing I want to tell you is, Diane and I thank you all, not only for being here either in person, and I know that there are a lot of people who have dialed in virtually on this simply beautiful uh, August morning, uh, but we also thank you for your investment, uh, for your commitment uh, to our family. At some point in my 57 years on this earth, and Diane reminded me uh, this morning that it's my 57 years. Uh, she's a lot younger than me, according to her. Uh, but uh, in my 57 years on this earth, in my 34 years of wearing the cloth of this great nation, at a critical time uh, when we needed you most, each of you touched me and my family uh, in a special way. These lifelong relationships creating the foundation uh, and the inspiration uh, that made dreams like today an actual reality. So from the heart, I say to you this morning that for this, my family, uh, Diane and I are eternally grateful. General McConville, Maria, thanks so much for honoring our family, uh, the Signal Corps, the historic Bulldog ROTC program at South Carolina State University, having produced 22 general officers since 1951, more than any other school in the country uh, other than West Point, uh, and, uh, and the great state of South Carolina. Sir, thanks so much to you and Maria uh, by agreeing and honoring us by agreeing to officiate this ceremony. Uh, Diane and I thank you not only for the kind words, but also for your leadership in stepping forward to honor the causes of investing in people as a priority for the Army, and investing in people as a priority for the nation. Chief, you've heard me say this before during some of our discussions, uh, but I believe it's worth repeating uh, because I've once again witnessed this phenomenon firsthand over the last five months during the COVID crisis. You and Secretary McCarthy have and continue to give our Army and continue to give the citizens of this nation the greatest gift that you could give and that gift, ladies and gentlemen, is the gift of a great example. So thank you, sir, for your incredible leadership during a time when I believe in my heart of hearts that our nation needs its army the most. Before I move on, given what it takes to put on an event of this magnitude, I'd be remiss if I didn't also take the opportunity to quickly recognize three groups of people who played a major role in making uh, this event this morning possible. I start with Chaplain Green, another great South Carolinian. I believe he's from Hilton Head, South Carolina. Chaplain, knowing, and you and I have had a few discussions, but knowing uh, what you know about our family story, I think you'd agree with me today that a day like today does not happen without the divine intervention of our Creator. So Chaplain, thank you for what you do for the Army and what you do for the nation, and thank you for the words of wisdom uh, this morning. To the Army Band, Pershing's own, uh, for once again adding an extra special touch to a special day. Uh, you are truly a national treasure, and uh, to be quite honest, I consider you to be among our nation's greatest ambassadors. The American people need and always need to hear uh, from you, and you do it better than anybody else in the world. And last but certainly not least, to Ms. Lauren Brennan, uh, Ms. Carmen Davis, and what I consider, a gentleman I consider to be a ceremonial and protocol legend here in MDW circles, Mr. Gary Hardy. As professionals, always working behind the scenes, you have once again put on yet another first class event, uh, highlighting uh, to the American people, uh, highlighting to the nation, and providing a view into who we are and what we stand for as United States Army, the absolute most trusted profession. Uh, on God's green earth. So ladies and gentlemen, I won't ask many things of you uh, this morning, 
Uh, but I would like to ask for a round of applause for those who put on this event. Thank you. <laughs> to the assembled audience, I recognize fully that although the picture on the program is mine, and the kind words spoken have been about my 34 years of service, that today's ceremony is actually not about me. In my mind, today's ceremony is yet another opportunity to personally thank those who sacrificed, to personally thank those who inspired, to personally thank those who labored so that a young man from a single parent household in Columbia, South Carolina, who was raised by his grandparents, who could neither read nor write, who was told by his high school guidance counselor not to pursue a college education, uh, that that young man could have the one thing that we all wish for our children and that one thing, ladies and gentlemen, is an opportunity. And thinking about those who give themselves to inspire others, I'm reminded of one of my favorite quotes from writer Arthur Ward, who once stated, and I quote, the mediocre teacher tells, the superior teacher demonstrates, but the great teacher inspires. With inspiration in mind, I want to take the opportunity to recognize my first mentor, my mother, Ms. Sarah Crawford, who, as the Chief mentioned, joins us from Columbia, South Carolina this morning. Although we faced great obstacles and great challenges growing up, like having me when you were 16 years old, my earliest memories are not of watching you struggle with raising a family in a tough neighborhood. Uh, my earliest memories are not of you uh, wringing your hands uh, when in 1969 in the Deep South, your son ended up being the only African-American kid uh, in his class of about 30 kids. I don't remember uh, anything negative about that. What I remember most uh, about our time uh, during your youth was watching you lead. I absolutely remember watching you lead. So mom, I say to you that everything I learned about the importance of hard work, everything that I learned about treating people with dignity and respect, everything that I learned about being resilient and persevering, I learned from you, my father, Daniel Austin Jr., who was always there, and my grandparents, Hayward and Gracie, while growing up in Columbia, South Carolina. So to my coach, mentor, greatest critic, biggest cheerleader and wife of 33 years, Diane, I say thank you for all that you've sacrificed and committed to the soldiers and families of our Army and to the children of our nation's communities. As a mother of two outstanding young men, my sons Bruce and Corey, and a career teacher and special educator, I believe in my heart of hearts that you represent all that is good about military spouses and all that is special about what I consider to be the real secret weapon of our United States Army, and that secret weapon is the strength and resiliency of its military families. Sweetheart, thank you for inspiring me to be better than I ever thought that I could be on this amazing journey called life. I love you more than I could ever put into words, but as you reminded me, uh, and you do this on a regular basis, a trip soon to either a jewelry store or a closest car, car dealership is actually a pretty good substitute uh, for that. To my boys, BJ and Corey, please know that your dad is so proud of the respectable men of character that you have become. You have both given me many joys over the years, uh, but I must say that at the very top of that list of joys, it's watching you interact and watching the way that you actually treat people. I'm also honored to have my daughter-in-law, Sonia, uh, our first grandchild, who uh, somehow already has her own room in our new home, uh, Bryn Elizabeth, uh, and uh, my brother's uh, sister-in-law and sisters joining us this morning. I will say to you all, the special bond that we share runs deeper than life itself. As I transition from the Army, the good news is you will likely see more of me. And if my baby sister Charlotte, who's a minister and who's watching here online from Columbia, she'll be joining us this, this weekend. But if she was here, uh, I believe she would say the bad news is that they're likely going to see more of me. 
So to the assembled audience, I want to be respectful of your time this morning, but I can't let this moment pass without acknowledging others who saw something in me and others who believed in me long before I knew enough and was confident enough to believe in myself. From Dr. Clarence Hill, as was mentioned by the chief, my high school teacher, who got me into South Carolina State, then college, now university, uh, and inspired me to become the first in my family to graduate from college. To ROTC instructors, Lieutenant Colonel retired, uh, Chris Jenkins, Major General retired, Abraham Turner, both who were great inspirations to myself and many other cadets at South Carolina State. To my first battalion commander in Cold War Europe, Fred Stein, who was the first one to explain to me the importance of mentorship and not only the importance of mentorship, but, but the necessity to seek mentorship from people who did not look like you. As Fred Stein uh, came from a completely different world than I did, but this gentleman, this young battalion commander, saw enough in me and brought me in and made sure that I understood that, listen, uh, not only do you need to expose yourself to be mentored by people who think differently than you do and who look differently than you do, but you, uh, young lieutenant, have a bright future and you're going to get an opportunity to mentor and make sure that while you are mentoring, that you're mentoring uh, everyone. To Brigadier General Von Richardson, who taught me compassion uh, as a leader, to last but certainly not least, General Dennis Vi, who is most responsible for my being a three-star general in the United States Army, and through his sterling example, taught me uh, since I had five of his old jobs, through his sterling example of service, taught me what it means to be a professional. Along with Lieutenant General Retired Bob Shea, uh, Brian Donahue, Steve Fogarty, Susan Lawrence, Bob Farrell, uh, and most recently, Dana Deasy. And a man who I consider to have been the godfather of the Army Signal Corps, the late Robert E. Gray. The one thing that all of these leaders had in common is their love of people, their passion for service, and their steadfast belief that the honor of leading is a privilege that we can never, ever, ever allow ourselves to take for granted. So ladies and gentlemen, in closing, I'd like to once again thank you all for the gift of your time this morning as we transition to a chapter in our life that we're very excited about. As I shared with Secretary McCarthy during our final office call last week when he asked me what I'm most proud of, Bruce, after 34 years of service, after multiple deployments, after three years on the Army staff uh, and experiencing a lot here that has occurred over the last three years, what is it that you're most proud of? What I told him was uh, that in my heart of hearts, the Army's provided me with several seminal moments that have become lessons in strategic leadership that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. Much work remains to be done, but we put the Army in a position, as the Chief mentioned, uh, to move it rapidly uh, over the next three to four years uh, from the industrial age to the information age. But to the question of what I'm most proud of, the answer is the legacy of the signal and cyber military and civilian leaders that we leave behind. That's the thing that I am most proud of. Our signal and cyber civilians, officers, non-commissioned officers, warrant officers, and young soldiers have truly been the heart that pumps the blood, that fuels the engine of our great army. From winning the Cold War in the 80s to your performance in Southwest Asia to overcoming the challenges of diversity, and that's a fight that I believe the Army will lead, and that's a fight uh, that I believe the Army will win, to battling the COVID crisis. It's truly been an honor having a front row seat watching history being made with each and every one of you, both soldiers, civilians, uh, officers, non-commissioned officers, every day. I think it was the late great, great Jackie Robinson who once said that life is not important except for the impact that it has on other lives. To the true meaning of today's ceremony, my hope, my dream, and my desire is that it's representative of my service and the impact that my service had on each 
one of you. Over the past 34 years of service, I've attended many ceremonies. And I must say that although I remember the speakers in most cases, ladies and gentlemen, I don't remember exactly what they said. But I say to you on this beautiful August morning, if there is one person within the sound of my voice who heard something today that inspires them to be leave in themselves more than they did before today, uh, if there's one person who heard something today that encourages them to be better than they thought that they could be. If there's one person that heard something today that provided them with a different perspective on the problems of today or provided them insights that lead to overcoming the challenges of tomorrow, then ladies and gentlemen, in my mind, uh, my 34 years of service, the sacrifices of my family over the last 34 years will not have been in vain. So as a soldier, I've endeavored to do many things. But ultimately, what I wanted most was to always set the type of example that would make those who invested in me proud. So as you depart today, I ask that we all remember those soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who, as I speak, are standing watch so that we may have the freedom to gather in celebration and recognition this morning. To this nation's next greatest generation of leaders and for the people who know me, you know that I always have something uh, for them. I say to you a couple of things. Number one, I'm a believer and I believe in you. The other thing that I say to you is regardless of the challenge, regardless of the uphill battles that await us, regardless of the complexity uh, that stares us in the face, I say to you that this is your time. Seize the moment and make a difference. May the generation that follows us find us ever faithful to the tasks that are ahead of us. People first, winning matters, Army strong. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Army Song.
The United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day. Due to social distancing guidelines and restrictions, there will not be a receiving line.